Okay, so uh, Sherry, let me uh, start with you. Um, can you define co-production from your end? You've done quite a few large investments. Can you define co-production and tell us from your perspective, has uh, the co-production lived up to the promise that it once held? Um, and I think this is a this is an excellent question to start out with because co-productions that term is thrown around and to mean a lot of different things throughout the world. So I think we first have to differentiate between official and unofficial co-productions. In many countries in the world, not in the U.S., there's not a single co-production treaty in the U.S. But in China, there are official co-productions. There are rules that you can avail yourself of and, and, and uh, obtain a co official co-production status. There are also many treaties around the world, and China has been uh, signing to various co-production treaties so that you can have two, you can have with a co-production a local uh, film in the UK and in China. So you get the benefit of having it be a local Chinese film as well as a local UK. And when you have official co-production status, you can, in the various countries that have co-production treaties, end up getting all sorts of different types of benefits, higher license fees, soft dollar subsidy arrangements. In China, you get the benefit of, of having a, a, a quota slot effectively by being able to be distributed outside of the, the restrictive otherwise distribution system in China. And so that is, the, in the first instance, we have to s define whether we're talking about official or unofficial co-productions. And then beyond that, within China, I found, uh, as we've been doing business over there for like the last eight years, w that co-productions are frequently not a co-production in the sense that I've just defined it, but they're really a co-financing transaction, where a Chinese investor is looking at providing funding for a film that's being shot in South Africa or France or New Zealand, and they call that a co-production slash co-financing. And that, that's an unofficial contractual arrangement, and it's really not a, any of the official type of co-productions that we're talking about. I think the official co-productions in China, in answer to your second question, are very much evolving. I think I was just in Beijing um, on, a, on a couple of different transactions, and it's, a, it's been a struggle. Charlie has had, and we were on the other side of Charlie, and he was uh, terrific in Skip Trace, but it's, it's a struggle. Skip Trace is a fabulous movie. I've had recent opportunity to watch it. It's beautifully filmed, fabulous locations in China. Uh, the star of stars, Jackie Chan, uh, Johnny Knoxville, but it was not successful outside of China. And I think that's the struggle, that part of the story elements were not really such that they translated into other jurisdictions. And so you mean in order to meet the requirements for being a co-production, the story elements had to be altered? Yes, and I think it, well, and they, I think in this case, and Charlie will talk more uh, about the development process. It was it was originally developed that way, and then I think it was after or part of the process to try and make it appeal to a broader international uh, market. And it and it wasn't in that regard. It although it was wildly successful in China, it wasn't entirely as successful I think as it could have been if it was possible to have the story elements directed to a broader international market. And one thought, and, I, and I'm not, it's not an original thought, but in China that it may make it easier to do more co-productions is to take non-Chinese films, successful films in the US and Europe, Australia, and remake them in China, right? So that you can make them localized, but you have then a vantage point that was successful outside of China. Just a thought. Thank you. Okay, so let's turn it over to, uh, we're lucky to have three producers with us, so starting <laughs> with you, Charlie. So tell us about your experience on Skip Trace and uh, what were some of the challenges that you experienced during the process, and do you agree with Sherry's viewpoint on the uh, uh, creative compromise? Well, I think, um, you know, I think Skip Trace did achieve a certain level of success internationally. I think in the U uh, Sherry's absolutely right that in the U.S. it was, it was not as well received and, and I think that's just because of the taste of the movie and because of the various creative elements in it. I think it, did, it is a good movie, but it's something that may not have been as current for American taste. In, in Southeast Asia and the Middle East and other places internationally, it, it, did, it did well. It did reasonably well to well to very well. And in China, it did, it did quite well. You know? 
So, uh, but you know, when you make a movie, it's a difficult thing to judge that going into it. You only know that when, it's, when the ship has already sailed and the movie's done. You know, I mean, you, you try to do the best you can with the script. And Sherry's correct in the sense that it was a script that was written by an American uh, scriptwriter originally, but you know, under the auspices of a Chinese development team. It was brought into one of our portfolio companies. We own a company called Exclusive Media, which was a very well-respected independent film company um, and was worked on, you know, developed, further developed there. And then we eventually stepped in and took over the project when we restructured Exclusive Media as their, as one of their, own, as their main owner. Um, but I think that, you know, from a, a creative standpoint, I think that's a really difficult thing to judge because, you know, you have to kind of be in that kind of zeitgeist and have your finger on what's contemporary taste. And things change. I mean, in the United States, things change. And I think from my experience, having gone to China for more than 20 years and having lived in China for many years, is that tastes in China change very fast. And, and there's a very kind of very contemporary feel about, about in, in China about what's popular and what will be commercially successful. And I think it changes, I think, even more rapidly than it is in the United States because I think China's still evolving and still developing, and it's a very, it's a very, very large country, and much more diverse in a lot of ways than the United States. Um, so I think that, you know, from a creative standpoint, it, it's always a difficult question as to what works. I think, for me, you know, the more objective things to talk about is, you know, how do you finance a movie? How do you put a deal together so that you can you can properly finance and do it in a way that both the Chinese parties and the Western parties are, are comfortable with doing those, you know, to putting together a rather substantial amount of money to make a movie. So you had some challenges along the way in putting your investment deal together. Yes, I mean, obviously, the, the way the Chinese have very their own system of financing, their own approach, and their own norms as far as financing goes, and, and the United States and the West have their own approaches and their own norms. And so kind of trying to combine the two systems together was, you know, very much a challenge that we had to work together with our partners, Talent International, Tangda, Film company, um, and um, you know they were great partners, and we, and you know we worked through a lot of issues and a lot of things that we weren't used to doing and they weren't used to doing, but you know there's just a whole concept of and and I'm talking about in the space of an independent film. Obviously, the studios have their own system of doing things, and when you do a co-production with a studio, it's a very different animal. Right. So without the benefit of the studio behind you, it's yeah. a different story. Well, if you're not you, because the studios, for example, don't use completion bond and they self-insure everything. So if you're, gonna if, you're, if you're in the independent film world, which is the vast majority of all films made in the United States are independent films, um, some may be acquired by studios, some may have a, you know, arrangements with studios, but still there are more independent films made than there are studio films made in any given year. Um, then you know, you're gonna be talking about primarily financing through the traditional foreign sales, minimum guarantees, banking, um, um, bonds, and all of those kinds of things. And these are all things that are very much developing in China, and they do, ha and they're very much aware of all of these things. But it's not something that's been solidified and been done for the last 40 years, like it has in, in the United States, when you know the MGs and all that whole system developed out of the 70s, and all the films that were made, companies like Majestic, who kind of really pioneered those those uh, mechanisms. And so, kind of combining those two systems together and getting them to work was was really a kind of a challenge. And you know, my advice to anybody making a co-production is make, make sure you have the right bank <laughs> because, <laughs> because the bond company is going to be looking to the bank for assurance. And if without a bond, you know, it's not, you're not going to be able to make the film. You're not going to be able to finance the film, at least from the Western side of it, if you're using this typical standard MG international sale, pro banking, all these kinds of things. So you know, we work with East West Bank. And, um, and I know they're a sponsor of, of Asia Society. And but, he had a good experience with but, them. So. But it, they were critical. Actually, they were critical because they had a branch in China. They, could, they were, were, had very good working relationships with our Chinese partners. We had a relationship with them through our, our various portfolio companies. And we were able to you know, get the financing structure put together, get the bond company comfortable, and, and to, to make it work for both sides. And, and that, that took some doing and, you know, and showing and also kind of getting the bond company to understand how this whole thing worked because even though they had done a f film previously in China, they'd been with China Film Group, which is obviously like a major studio, it's a very different kind of experience as opposed to working with a private Chinese film company. 
Okay, so let's uh, turn to Liu and Mark before we uh, get the government's perspective. Um, so Liu, you're in the process of making a film with Jackie Chan. Can you tell us about uh, co-production and how it's worked out from your perspective? Gansai 国外的一些制作人也好和就是呃中国跟海外合作中通常会出现的一些问题比如说在文化差异上面比如说在沟通上面比如说在对于呃包括在中国和大陆和台湾的合作上面大家语言是相通的但是在一些问题的理解上面依然会有一些偏差那这
he's done a great job of explaining exactly what happens. It's, it's a cultural difference um, <coughs> and the business difference. There's, it, it never, uh, it, it's, it, I, I thought the idea of sol solving it with pictures was a fantastic idea when you're trying to, t you were all, uh, at film school they told us, make sure you're all telling the same lie. <laughs> which is you're, that you're making the same picture. And that's exactly what you're doing by, by uh, getting the visual, um, visual cues uh, that help. But it was enormous, where the, uh, the challenge of contracting, the challenge of uh, negotiating relationships. And also, in our case, we had a company that was very new to the filmmaking process. They had made a few television shows. This was their first big movie. And it was their first big movie with... Um, with a big movie star, and it was their first co-production. So this is your Chinese partner? Your Chinese partner, who's a wonderful company, now called Grand Canal Pictures. Uh, at the time, the, the parent company was called Long's United. And um, the, the, uh, wh where, does, where do the challenges end? Everything from contracting to, uh, d we had a situation. Here's an interesting one. Publicity in China is run in to completely differently from you the way you would run it in uh, Australia, probably anywhere else in the world. They have a much longer lead time. They want to start putting out images from the set to get people excited on Weibo, if, am I pronouncing it correctly? Weibo, yeah, Weibo. Weibo, that they, they want to start getting all of that stuff out there. And until, a, when a Western company wants to publicize, and this is my experience, I, I, can't, I can't generalize, but um, we want to hold everything until we're ready. We want to get a plan together that's, that's uh, uh, incredibly targeted and ready to go, and we were in conflict because they wanted images and, and um, we didn't want to give them images and we wanted to control that situation. Um, in the end, both of us were subverted because our actress, uh, uh, Li Bingbing, got so sick that it got onto Weibo, and all of a sudden there were pictures of her in hospital that were fake pictures of her, beautifully made up in a hospital bed bleeding from her arm, none of which was real. I, I, I know because I was in the hospital with her. And um, so we so got free control. publicity anyway. Um, and, and it came out on, on, on the early schedule. But that was the first one where we really realized things were not the same. And from there on in, um, we just made a concerted effort to communicate all the time, uh, lawyer to lawyer, production ex executive to production executive, producer to producer. And we got the picture. We're almost done. We're, we're about to uh, wind up our visual effects uh, part of the picture. And we're hoping to move on to finishing it and getting it out into uh, cinemas next year. We think the, the movie's going to be great. Um, but what a challenge. And you, as a producer, often uh, in Australia, it's a long time between drinks. Uh, because how many $30 million movies or whatever the budget was um, uh, can, uh, can be made in a row. And I always have this frustration at the end, like, I know so much right now. Why won't they let me go make another one right now? Because the other thing about China is you were there last week, and you're there this week, and everything has changed. There's a different group of people to talk to. There's a different, um, there's a different uh, genre of film that's pop popular. There's a different group of actors that, that are, have become popular. But uh, the CFCC and Mr. Miao are very solid. They don't change the regulations on us. We had a very good experience with the CFCC uh, uh, during this process. And in fact, we're told by the CFCC that our movie, which is, uh, involves uh, very lethal spiders and is a bit of a thriller, was the first SARF certificate ever given to a co-production with this kind of material. And, the, and, and we were honored and pleased and uh, delighted that they took a risk on us. Okay, so let's turn to the government side. Uh, so everybody here is interested in uh, your views on the co-production process. Can you tell us from your perspective, what, uh, how do you see the trends going forward? Do you, do you uh, plan on relaxing some of the constraints? Are the constraints going to uh, remain the same? What's your approach and philosophy to the co-production process going forward? Uh 
那主要这这三点，呃，中国的呃合拍的规定呢，实际上也是在朝着开放的呃方面在改变。比如说，我们中国曾经呃要求这个合拍电影的后期制作在中国做，啊、呃，当然如果需要在境外做的话，要向这个电影局申请。那么这一条规定在前几年，呃，大概是在一三还是一四年就取消了。现在我们的这个电影可以在这个世界上任何的地方做后期。呃呃，我个人呃，这个也比较了中国和其他一些国家，比如欧洲的一些国家对合拍的规定或者要求。呃，我觉得中国现在还算是呃没有太多的限制的呃规定。可能境外的制片人和中国合作的时候，他们比较呃觉得比较难的就是中国元素，因为我们要求这个电影，呃，内容里边要有中国元素，也就是说，一个完全的外国的故事、外国的团队制作、外国的演员这样的电影呢，是按照中国现在的规定是不可以合拍的，呃。刚才各位也也谈到了这个，呃，就是呃，在合作中，双方由于文化差异，可能思维方式不同，呃，这个拍电影的方式不同，可能会造成一些合作中的呃这个障碍，呃，这一点是肯定的。呃，中国和无论是和美国合拍，还是和其他国家、欧洲，包括澳洲合作，我们双方的不同的文化决定了我们这个这个思维方式不同。所以在我们这个合作的前期，我们大家在谈合合作的时候，在我们呃签合约的时候，可能由于呃这个想法不一样，会有一些。呃，障碍这需要大家来沟通来解决。在制作过程中，同样，不同的制作方式、不同的这个工作方式和思维方式，都可能会造成合作上的一些呃小问题。呃，但是呃这样的问题呢，只能通过沟通，通过互相相互的了解，呃，还有就是在合作中磨合。来解决，我相信啊，这个不光是和中国合作，如果美国和欧洲和澳洲合作，可能也有类似的问题，都会由于有因为双方不同的方式啊，造成的一些呃这个合作上的这个些小问题啊。但是我觉得刚才这个有的嘉宾讲的非常好，就是说怎么来更好的沟通，怎么来达成一种这个信任，我觉得首先是双方要。彼此尊重，呃，如果彼此尊重的话，呃，就可以尝试去理解对方，尝试去就去听对方的这个想法，呃，我觉得信任很重要，呃，通过沟通和交流，彼此应该有一个信任，呃，这样才能把这个这个合作做好，否则的话，可能。有一些合作就会出问题，那么一方有这样的想法，另一方不理解，他可能就不执行，这样的话就会造成整个的工作的中的合作的问题。那么，呃，所以我觉得还是要彼此信任，这样的话才能够呃合作的更好。Okay, so, um that's uh, communication is very important. We've uh, established that. And the financing model, I think, can be judged pretty objectively because the percentage of uh, money required from either side can be uh, uh, visible to everyone. But in terms of the rules, how, how, what's your philosophy on the creative process of storytelling? 
So is it a certain percentage of the script that requires it to be a co-production? Or are there more specific regulations on uh, who can be the hero, who can be the villain? What is your philosophy on those parts of the rules to determine what qualifies as a co-production in the storytelling aspect?呃，首先我说投资，呃，目前中国的呃合拍电影的这个呃规定里边没有要求，呃，这个投资啊一定要是什么样的比例，但是中国已经和十四个国家签了政府间的这个电影合作协议，那么在这些协议当中都有约定，
you know, China has a very unique situation in the sense that, it, you know, there's no real rating system in China for the movies. There's no MPAA saying this is an R movie or a PG movie or a PG-13 movie, and anybody can go to any movie in China. So, hence, you know, the Chinese have to be sensitive to what's shown on the screen because children and everybody else can go to any movie. It's not like here where we have very, you know, restricted types of movies because we allow certain type of adult content which is not permitted to be seen by younger people. So that doesn't really exist in China. So I think China has a very kind of family-friendly and family-oriented approach to entertainment. They want everybody to be able to see everything. And because of that, you know, certain kinds of content that the West is used to having is not going to really be particularly accepted by the audiences or by the government in, in certain kinds of situations. And so I think everybody acknowledges it, but I don't think that's a huge in, impediment to a create, the creative process. But I think finding a hard story, as Hollywood has a hard time finding all the time, is that it's hard to make a really good movie. It is not an easy project. Most movies don't make money. I mean, that's the reality of it. <laughs> don't so, bring the room down. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, 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 you know, you have to make a lot of movies to find one that really works well. And, it's, and it has a lot to do with creative elements. It has to do with timing. It has to do with a lot of different aspects of it. But what we do as an art form is a difficult endeavor. People were talking on, in other situations about metadata, and you know there are people here in the United States who try to figure out some kind of formula for scripts, and, and none of that's ever really worked. You know, there is you a don't believe in the House of Cards model. <laughs> there is a certain alchemy to all of this that is not you know not quantifiable, easily quantifiable, and I, and so I think that you know co-productions as as an art form other than with Hong Kong. Hong Kong co-productions are still the majority of co-productions and been going on for a long time. But co-productions with the West is not that old. I mean, our movie is the only, I only know one other independent film that's been a US-Chinese co-production, which was uh, Man of Tai Chi. And that's it. I, I mean, there have been a few other studio ones previously, but it really hasn't been a lot of it. So I don't think we can really make any kind of firm judgment about the creative process or, or any of these other you know, uh, you know, creative elements yet. And, it, and it's an evolving situation. And, um, and people are trying to figure out what things work in China and here and, and what can, kind of things fit in the co -brings. Because, you know, Fast and Furious 7 sure worked everywhere. Yes. <laughs> you know? So, and, and, and those other movies that the Chinese movie I discussed also worked really well. You know, what I found remarkable about some of those movies was that you know, when Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out, which is not a PRC movie, but it's still a Chinese language movie, that people in the United States overwhelmingly went to the version that was in Chinese, rather than, they had a dubbed version, Sony had a dubbed version, but very few people want, people preferred to watch it in the original see language the with subtitles, and, and, and people embraced that movie, because it was a wonderful story, and beautifully shot, and, and showed beautiful aspects of Chinese culture, and, and filmed in beautiful places in Mulan Shan, outside of Shanghai. And same thing with Hero. It was a beautiful movie. It was beautifully shot, and it was distributed in, in native language. So, so I think that there's examples out there that that it, creative elements can work. It's just I don't think we've had enough times trying to make it work to, to find. There's not a thousand or a hundred or two hundred of them. There's a handful of that have been done, and we're still trying to. Everybody's still trying to figure it out on the Chinese side, on the U.S. side, on the Australian side, on the British side, on every side. Everybody's trying to figure out how to, how this can work. So, Leo, let me ask you a question from a slightly different perspective. If you're making a movie, let's say it's a co-production in, in China, um, the Chinese market is so large. The Korean Japanese markets are quite large. Do you even need to have the Western market in order for a film to be greenlit or to be a success in your model?我们在讲合拍项目的时候，当然我们希望我们做出来的电影，无论是在西方市场还是在东方市场，或者说在呃呃英语国家还是华语国家，都能有非常好的一个一个呃收益。呃，但是讲实话，这件事情非常的难。
按照某一个方式去拍的话，未必得到所有人都能够认可。那所以要要找到共同的命题，又有相同大家都能接受的表达方式，我觉得这件事情特别难。嗯，所以站在一个商业立场上面，往往我们在做一个合拍项目的时候，我们会站得比较清楚。我做的到底是一个东方市场为主的，比如说华语片为市场为主的一个合拍项目，还是做一个呃英语市场、全球市场为主的一个合拍项目？那基于这样的一个定位之后，我会有更清晰的操作的方式。那那这样的项目其实也都有成功的，像之前。呃呃，那个中午还跟人提到那个《功夫梦》，就是成龙和和那个 Will Smith 那个儿子拍的，他其实偏向于呃西方市场，但是在中国也取得了很好的成绩。而我们刚刚完成的这个《机器之血》这个项目，其实是偏向于站在中国市场为主，然后兼顾一些西方的这样的一个一个状况，这样我们在定位上面更清晰，在所有的决策和项目的推进上面会更清晰。当然。站在某一个语种作为主要的市场的时候，并不是代表我们不考虑其他的呃这个观众的一些接受。呃，合拍项目其实就像刚才说的，恰恰是要跟合作方彼此更尊重、更相互了解，要从对方的角度去考虑问题，才会让这个项目进展的特别顺利。我举个小例子，我们我们这个项目在澳洲，我们登上了悉尼歌剧院的楼顶去拍摄。应该是全球第一个剧组实实在在的登到悉尼歌剧院顶上去拍摄。以前悉尼歌剧院也出在出现在一些美国的电影里面，比如说《X 战警》，然后把它空炸掉，然后这样的一些表现方式。讲实话，呃，澳洲的人民并不太喜欢。所以，所以我们再去谈一开始跟悉尼歌剧院沟通说，我们希望。我们这个项目可以在悉尼歌剧院拍摄的时候，其实他们一开始并不接受，呃，然后我们去，<笑>我我们后来告诉他们，当然有有有成龙参与是很重要的一个因素，而且我们那个项目其实是展现了悉尼歌剧院非常美、非常特别的一些一些感官。Mark 昨天有看到我们的那个一些小的 clip， 有看到拍的非常好。And explosive. <笑>所以通过这样的沟通，我们在我们的片子里面不仅展示了成功的功夫，而且同时把澳洲最好的、最地标性的建筑展现给中国或者全展现给全世界人民看，对澳洲也是一件非常好的事情。只有达到双方共赢的时候，然后才会得到彼此的认可。最终我们在那个上面拍了，而且效果非常的好。呃，我们也有幸算是。第一个去完成了这样的一个一个一个创举，所以我觉得在所有的合作中都要去从对方的角度去考虑问题。就像就像刚才苗总讲的，我们在讲合拍片的时候，我们有投资的一个限制，有呃表演人数的一个限制，但是其实更重要的是说那个中国元素。我们希望呃西方的电影到中国来拍的时候，不仅是展现西方的内容。同时能够把中国文化里面非常好的一些方面和内容，通过这样的项目能够展现给全世界人看。那我觉得能够达到这种共同的理解之后，合拍就会变得是一个更好推进的一件一件事情。Okay, so, Mr. Xiao Tian,、um, when we're talking about、uh, what's happening in China in terms of the number of theaters. You're building so many megaplexes over there. The number of screens is expanding rapidly,、um, so there'll be more room for product to enter the market. So, would you see the co-production route as a way for、uh, filmmakers to get more of their content in as the、uh, market grows and the number of screens grows?、Uh, will you relax some of the constraints that are on co-production? Or do you see the quota changing to be larger than 34? How do you see the future evolving there? Uh, 未来的配额会不会增加？这个我呃不敢说，因为呃它是另外呃一个部门要去面对的问题，我也很难猜测。呃，嗯，但是我倒觉得呃这个合拍其实是一个。非常好的补充的方式，比如说，呃，经常会有一些呃国外的这个呃
电影机构，呃，说希望能够有更多的我们国家的电影来能够能够进入中国市场，啊、呃，我想呢，这个呃合拍可能是一个非常好的方方式，而且呢，我想跟各位讲，合拍呢不仅仅它，呃，一旦我们这个合作项目呃被批准了，那么这个电影就在中国就被视同为合拍。国产影片，它就可以在中国市场，呃，放映。除了除此之外呢，呃，合拍电影，嗯，这个的分成的比例也比进口引进的这个进口大片的分成比例要高很多。所以我想，这就是合拍的好处啊。呃，刚才各位谈到中国的呃这个呃没有分级制度，所以我们。呃，这个呃，小孩子年龄呃，也也可能会进电影院去看电影，所以我们呃，对影片当中的有些内容，比如说呃，特别惊悚或者恐怖的、血腥、暴力的，呃，还有就是涉及性这样的内容呢，我们会要求不是限制，而是说不能太多，或者是表表达要适适度。但是呢，我还是想跟跟各位说。其实不用太担心，就是我们的电影什么可以，什么不可以。我觉得这方面啊，现在啊，真的不是什么问题。呃，比如说好莱坞的所有的大片，那种《变形金刚》《敢死队》等等，所有的大片没有一部没有进中国市场。呃，可能在过去的十年里，只有一部电影就是《三百勇士》这个电影，因为它太多的。暴力和血腥，这部电影没有进，其他的所有好莱坞大片都进来了。我觉得美国电影，呃，这个是很健康的，我个人认为是很是很好的。所以我觉得，呃，内容上不用担心，没有问题，是可以的。我倒觉得现在可能大家面面对的一个麻烦就是中国元素怎么来进来，经常会见到这样的。剧本就是把一个美国的剧本或者一个其他国家的剧本里边，把这个原来的剧本的这个纽约改成上海了。这这个恐怕这样的改变送到中国来，恐怕不太行。而且这个电影可能拍出来也会觉得很奇怪，因为发生在纽约的事和在上海的事事情是不同的。呃，所以我还是呃觉得我们呃既然。既然想合作，还是要这个为合作呀做一个剧本，呃，这样的话可能呃，一方面它呃符合要求中国元素，另一方面呢，我觉得可能呃呃这个这个对在中国市场啊也有好处。呃，我想跟各位说，中国的目前的电影票房最好的两部电影，还真不是美国片。是中国的，呃，电影对，呃、yes. ，这两部电影的成本会比美国那些大片啊，差不多十分之一吧，非常低的成本。我个人认为，要说影片的品质，我不认为它比美国片好，但是它确实在中国的票房非常好。所以，呃，刚才各位嘉宾也谈到，就是我们做合拍片，我们不。我们当然希望能够兼顾更大的市场，但是有的时候可能我们把这部电影、这部中美合拍电影定位于它的主要市场放在中国，或者把主要市场放在美国。呃，所以呃，如果我们想呃让这个电影在中国获得成功的话，可能呃在剧本创作方面听一听中方合作者的意见，呃，因为他们更了解中国的市场和观众，这样的话。呃，我觉得如果一个呃合适的预算的电影，仅仅在中国或者仅仅在北美，它成功已经够了，它已经够了。当然，如果是特别大的预算，那当然要在全球，全球发行要在全球呃取得成功。Okay, so this will be my last question, and then we'll open it up to Q&A from the audience. So, Mark, um, from your perspective in Australia, um, 
Of the 34 films that can go into China, most of them get taken up by Hollywood. So is co-production your only route, or are there other routes that you consider when trying to get into the Chinese market? I think it's pretty much the only route, because <clears throat> you can't compete budget-wise with those Hollywood films. And the people who are making the decisions are the distributors in China. They have a certain number of slots that they're allowed to use. And they were, they're going to go for Fast and Furious 8 before they're going to go for you know, get a love, nice Australian film kind of movie. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, there, we, we make great pictures in Australia, but it's, and despite this accent, I have lived there since 1989, but I'm from North Carolina originally. But the, um, I think that's the only route, but it's a great route. It's, um, this is a world where the traditional sources for independent film financing are dwindling. We have a market on the rise in its consumption of movies. We have, an, and uh, there is a, a palpable sense that there, when you go to Beijing, you can feel the fact that there is money to invest in movies. People are optimistic because of the projections of the growth of screens and the growth of audiences over the next uh, uh, three to, to five to seven years. Um, hopefully, those projections are, are right, and we're going to feed that beast. Um, but one of the things that's interesting when we were talking about story earlier with, with uh, the, my, my colleagues here. It occurred to me, yes, we can be, make it a Chinese film, or we can make it an Australian film, or US film, and it's, got a, and it's a co production. But there's another option open to us, which is are we going to invent something new? Is the, are, will we adapt, like so many people before us, to a source of financing and a large audience and find ways? Not that there's ever a magic formula in films. There, it, it, the minute you see one, it, it's com it, it completely blows up. So, what's an example of something new? Uh, I'm thinking of, um, well, you talked about effect, displays of affection in Chinese movies and how the Chinese audiences don't, may, may you not feel that, um, that these are authentically Chinese. We have a beautiful hug between two Chinese children in our, in our picture. And I think that hug sets up some things later down the track. This is a small thing, but we have done it in conjunction with our Chinese uh, uh, partners. But you also have to be careful. Lions don't go inside. So don't put the lions inside. Am I correct, guys? They're supposed to be outside the door, um, I, I believe. So they're trying to hide those lions that are inside. But, but um, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's new, uh, like Charlie says. And it's exciting, and it's a great opportunity. Don't view it as an obstacle. We've got to view it as an opportunity. Yeah. Okay, great. So with that note, we'll turn it over to questions from the audience. Yes, in the back. You have a mic. My name is Rudy. I'm a producer from Canada. And my question is, uh, uh, Canada and China already have a great uh, co-production treaty already. In fact, we're producing our first one with uh, Aishi in China. Uh, how, is, how are you treating an American co-production differently than an official co-production? Um, Mr. Mao? Mr. Miao, or who, Mr. Would you like Miao? To, who would you like to? Uh, 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 China and Canada are different. 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 当然有可能有一个不同就是美国的预算更大一点我觉得这个合作除了从政府层面的一些选择和考虑之外其实也会从商业层面我们的项目其实也有去加拿大采过景然后有去澳洲采过景最后选择澳洲并不是因为中澳
呃，那么我想请问那个苗总一个问题啊，就是我们公司策划了一个项目，就是这个中美非三国呃合拍一部电影，叫做《离煞》，那么是描述菲律宾的国父一位民族英雄，那么他呢，祖籍是在我们中国的福建，哎，那么就是。我们想请问，就是说，像刚才苗总很感谢你介绍了两国合拍的相关政策，就想请问一下，这个三国合拍有没有什么限制？是不是这个中国的投资还是不能低于百分之三十？呃，另外呢，也想请问，看看是不是可以，呃，就是请教一下，呃，如果那么就是，呃，中国呃，我们比如说福建政府提供一部分资金，菲律宾这边提供资金，那么。就是我们想，呃，就是引进美国这边的一些它的金融融资方面的一些呃手段、一些工具，是不是呃也可以请在座的，就是呃呃美国的朋友或者是刘总来给我们做一个呃答复？谢谢。啊，呃，中国呃和两国合拍和三国合拍没有什么不同。呃，刚才我也说了，呃，这个投资比例我们现在并没有硬性规定，我们一般来说就是，呃，少的一方不少于百分之十五就可以了。希望你这个项目能够，能够有进展啊，呃，这个如果这个成熟了，报到我们公司了。Yes， 明白。据刚才的问题，还有一个呃 follow up question， 就是说，如果说美方或者说外国投资方他们合拍的时候，他们的嗯、呃、投资不是用钱的方式，而是用比如说别的 IP， 或者说他们提供服务，这样子可以算作是 co financing 或者说 co investment 吗？谢谢。呃，可以的，如果。这个有的投资不是现金，而是器材、设备或者其他的这个，呃，都可以，都可以。Because I haven't taken from this side of the room. There's、uh, any questions on this side? I can't see. Okay, now come back to the side. Yes, please. 你好，我是那个杨有才，来自芝加哥有才营的。我们之前跟中国有过合拍这个合呃合作，在芝加哥。然后现在的时候就有一个问题，就是说在合拍的过程中啊，有时候会发现，因为我们还算是比较有经验，这个周期啊、预算周期啊都没有拉长，这是一个非常关键的一个事情。然后我们就会发现，在中国的一些剧组的接洽过程中呢，有一些好的剧组呢，在美国的时候就会发现，有一些可能一些制片公司啊，质量良莠不齐，导致这个。这种这个拍摄周期啊、延长啊、预算超支啊等等这些问题。那现在我的问题就是，有没有一个呃一个公开的或者是一个比较比较好的一个平台，能够让美国一些华人背景的这样一些制片公司啊或者经纪公司啊，能够跟国内的一些比如说像合影业啊进行呃公开的这样的一个一个一个，就是说遴选，能够就是挑选到在美国一些好的这些华人背景的制片公司来进行合拍。因为毕竟华安公司还是有一定的这个这个背景的优势。呃，以以我们在海外选择合拍公司的经验来讲的话，呃，有的时候一些私人的一些渠道未必有那么好的效果，呃，反而是通过一些呃，比如在澳洲好的一些合作伙伴的这种推荐，包括澳洲使馆文化处给的一些推荐，他们有一个类似像。就中国电影局叫，非呃忘了名字了，就类似像中国电影局，然后他们给了一些呃好的公司的一些推荐，呀、yeah. yeah. ，呃呃，然后最终我们选定的合作伙伴，我觉得会会比较靠谱。那同样，我觉得到中方也是一样的，可能通过一些官方的途径，或者确实你已经了解到的国内的一些好的公司，然后去推荐一些制作的合作伙伴，会更稳妥一些吧。啊，因为中国人有的时候愿意找。朋友关系，对，找熟人，然后但是这种，呃，当他过了几层之后，其实那个效果并不好。